Hi, I didn't see you standing there. Come on in. I was just in here thinking about a few things. If you don't mind, why don't you click subscribe and meet me over in the study and we'll have a chat. Well, hello, Senator Tom Tillis, Republican, North Carolina, I believe. I've seen you around the halls some. You come across as really being very genuine. You come across as actually caring, which is really nice. Then yesterday, or maybe it was the day before, I get an email, and it has a copy of a transcript of a speech you gave on the floor, I think on February 26th, some side, some sort of explanatory speech. And um, I really wanted to touch a few points on that speech you gave because um, it was just really kind of annoying. One of the first issues was your little tit-for-tat issue. Yes, that has historically been a huge issue in politics. Ooh, if we do something, it gives the other side cause to go ahead and do the same thing. That's both right and left. It's been a check and balance that's gone on for ages, forever. And I get that. And it, it's, a re it's always been a very real concern for both sides of the aisle. The problem is, and, and it would be a valid concern now if you were dealing with Democrats. You have not been dealing with Democrats for some years now. Um, you're dealing with people who call themselves progressives. They're actually not, but... That's what they're calling themselves. And if you think for one minute that if they were in the White House, there would be anything stopping them from doing everything they want with signing powers, emergency declarations, anything, you're wrong. Because they have and feel no compunction about doing whatever they want, whenever they want, to achieve their goals because they think they know what's best for everybody. They do not believe in consensus. They do not believe in right and wrong. They believe in their way. This, you have to face the fact that, take for example, if AOC had been elected to the White House instead of her house, her representative district, what do you think she would be doing with this absolutely asinine new green deal she would have no compunction about using an emergency declaration to put a 10-year moratorium to get rid of aviation to get rid of flatulent cows to do any of this other absolutely ridiculous thing stupid things she would have no trouble destroying our economy with the swipe of a pen so you think you're saving tit for tat you're not there's a point where you talk about having seen the border on horseback and ATV and, and all this sort of thing. Good. I'm glad you've seen the border. But that's not the same thing as understanding the border. Which you prove you have a very limited knowledge of when you talk about poison coming across the border and coyotes. and So you're talking about drug trafficking. You're talking about the coyotes and the humanitarian issue these jackasses create. Absolutely. Um, that's all superficial stuff. You're basically riding in a boat on an oil slick. Why aren't you telling the truth? Why aren't you telling the truth about the border, about South America, and what the porousness of our border is doing to the countries in South and Central America? Why aren't you out there telling the truth? Senator Tillis, you have the power to be on every single show on Sunday morning talking about the truth. How our porous border is condemning South America and South Americans. Every time somebody cross, crosses that border illegally, they condemn themselves to a certain kind of life here and they take away all the energy and all the positive desire for change they've got. You've got nobody left to be police officers to create an environment of, you know, we're the good guys. You've got nobody left to be a positive influence for anything because they're all running across the border for a better life. 
I get that these people want a better life. We all understand that. Nobody can blame them for that. But if we continue to allow our border to be porous, they'll never be able to have that better life in South America. South America deserves some security, some prosperity. These are smart, wonderful people with vibrant histories. But their history, their future history is being robbed by us. And I don't understand why you're not telling the American people the truth. You're, you're whining about drugs being trafficked across the border and coyotes and the humanity. You're falling into the same emotional claptrap that the people on the left who claim they care about South Americans are using. These are their talking points and they're not based in fact. They're not based in what's actually happening. I expect better from you. Maybe I just helped you tell the truth. Then you talk about having an issue with 3.5 billion of the 8 billion that the White House is proposing being spent on the border. Something about, I believe it's the defense military construction budget. Is this district protectionism? Is this got to do with Cherry Point? Are you expecting a whole bunch of money to flow into North Carolina from some military construction issue? Is it something else? I don't know because all you say is, I don't like this. Okay, fine. You don't like it? Find it somewhere else. Don't just turn around and go, I don't like this, and stop. Um, the job is find the money. Oh, wait, and tell the truth. You're not doing that either. I, I'm, you know, I really found this transcript interesting. Then, let's see. I'm going to try to do a quote here. You say, you hope, quote, over time, we can find a way to fully fund a border strategy, end quote. There's more, but that was more than enough. Do you really? Do you really? Because you haven't done much about it. None of y'all are out there doing anything about it. Nobody's even giving it much lip service. No, just let's let South America and Central America turn into a cesspit and do nothing about it. Because if you look at the last 10, 20, 30 years, there has been no improvement in South America and Central America for the citizens of Central and South America. If there's a problem at the border, it's that the border is porous and they don't they're not encouraged to stay and make it better. If everybody in South and Central America that wants a better life doesn't want to live with drugs and drug cartels and lawlessness and decapitated bodies on the street, if all those people slip across a border over a period of time, there's nothing left for South and Central America to ever get better, to ever prosper. It's not easy. I get that. And yeah, you're going to have to jump all over these crappy NGOs that are just largely responsible for a whole lot of this. But you're not out there talking about the truths about anything. So I kind of wonder if you really do hope to ever fully fund a border strategy. What a lovely little euphemism. Now, Senator Tillis, maybe somebody needs to start a 5013C. Not very hard to do. Get a couple of uh, professional radio commercials made. Not hard to do. And play them all over your district. I think a GoFundMe fundraising campaign for radio commercials would do quite well. I think people would like some border truth. Let's see. Um, imagine people are driving in their car and they hear something like, You need to call Senator Tom Tillis and find out why he's not telling North Carolinians the whole truth. Or maybe, I'm going to tell you what Senator Tom Tillis won't. 
I'm going to tell you the hard, unpleasant truth. Our porous southern border has functioned to suck away all the energy, hope, and talent out of South America. We're a wealthy nation using and perpetuating a porous southern border to prop up our own economy, to profit from South America's loss. Support solidifying the southern border so South Americans can reclaim their countries, so South America can prosper. Call Senator Tom Tillis and tell him support a non-porous border. Or how about this one? Our porous southern border is creating a cycle of poverty, degradation, corrupt politicians, drug cartels, ineffective and corrupt police. Our porous southern border bleeds away all the talent and energy and hope for change out of South America, condemning it to a cycle of nothing but continued despair. Call Senator Tom Tillis and tell him you want action on the poorest southern border. Women and children are frequently dumped in the desert, like yesterday's trash, by criminal gangs who earn their income sneaking people across our poorest southern border. Some get out of the desert alive, others never make it. Young people are murdered along the trek from many parts of Central and South America while women and children die. Senator Tom Tillis hopes that over time we can find a way to fully fund a border strategy. Call Senator Tillis. Tell him you don't want hope, you want action. <laughs>